it's not it's definitely not among all Wiccans. I actually have known some Wiccans since then who were very pro-life. It's as with any other religious group, there's diversity. There are there are Christians who believe abortion is totally morally okay, and obviously many Christians believe abortion is completely wrong. So you know, I can't generalize about Wiccans or pagans or New Age people, but definitely among the group my mother was involved with, um, some were some considered themselves Wiccan, some considered themselves Buddhist, but they all spoke of abortion as a sacrament, as a sacred rite, as something that was sacred and special to women, and a few of them would openly mention it as child sacrifice and blood sacrifice in general. Menstrual blood was considered sacred and there were rituals done with that as well. The basic purpose of it was to educate women in the menstrual extraction technique, which is a very crude form of early abortion. It can also be done on women who are not pregnant just to not have to have periods. That's something my, my mother wanted to have it done on me for that reason, because I had very difficult periods. She wanted to have me have menstrual extractions done and I wouldn't do it. But um, in 92, they were worried that if George Bush got reelected and there was a Republican Congress that there would be a lot of restrictions on abortion, that Roe vs. Wade might even be overturned, and that the abortion industry might have to go underground. As it was before Roe vs. Wade, there were a lot of women doing underground abortions. So they felt this was something that was important to teach and learn and practice on each other. So. They had a party at our house, my mother and some of the women from the clinic and some of the women from her NOW chapter. She was vice president of our local NOW around that time. And so they, they came over and brought um, its mayonnaise jars and tubing and very crude suction pumps is how you do menstrual extraction. And other than that, it was sort of just like a party. I mean, my dad and I set up, you know, stock pots to boil the equipment in between uses and I, you know, set up a table to serve drinks and hors d'oeuvres. And the women all said we set up plastic sheets in the living room. My dad and I mostly stayed in the kitchen because mom and dad were arguing about whether or not I'd have to participate in the party or not. My dad eventually won and he, he and I went out to dinner and a movie and didn't come back till late that night. But um, basically the women all, once they were all there, they all got naked. That was my, uh, that was my big issue with it is I was, uh, you know, I was how old? 13 at the time and I was really, I didn't want to be naked in front of a bunch of people. I, I've always been kind of naturally conservative and modest about things and I was freaked out at the thought of being naked in front of like a dozen women. But they all got naked and took turns doing the menstrual extraction procedure on each other. The jars started, to f I remember the jars filling up with blood in the hallway. The, the jars would fill with blood and they'd get another jar and they were, they were saving the blood. And you know, I walked past a couple, mostly I stayed in the kitchen with my dad and they would bring in, you know, this, these tubes and things with blood and dad and I would, you know, rinse them and put them in the pots to sterilize, to be reused. And I, I just, it was really, it's, I mean, it, it's difficult to talk about. It was strange and terrifying. They were playing, you know, the goddess music on the stereo the whole time. And the few times I walked, I walked by to go to the bathroom or go to my room for something. I could see them in there, you know, a dozen or so naked women starting to get covered with blood. They were smearing the blood on each other in patterns and symbols. And mostly the blood was getting saved and the, you know, clinic people took it with them when they left. And the next day, you know, when my dad and I got home, it was really late at night and the bloody sheets were still everywhere. My mother had gone to bed and we just, we folded up all the bloody stuff and we drove it to some like unlocked dumpster behind an office building and threw it in and drove away. Just we just kind of tried to put it out of our minds. My dad was never didn't my dad was still nominally Christian. He didn't go to church, but he still considered himself a Christian. And he was he he just kind of withdrew during all this and eventually left. I was never really comfortable with any of this stuff. Sometimes I would play along with it or parrot the things I was supposed to say. Because, you know, you, you, want, you want to fit in with the adults in your life and you want to, you know, children have an instinct to obey their parents. And it was really hard for me to go against my instinct to do what was right in order to obey. 
I've known people throughout the years, people who were into various occult practices, but nothing, um, nothing particularly like this. This this specific blood sacrifice type of stuff does seem to be prevalent in the abortion industry, and most of the other Wiccan or pagan people I've known, their their practice just seems to be completely different.